need some pump. Lay some pump. Lay some oh, there there pump on me. Have a BPM slower than that. Yeah. <laughs> Chimes are right in tune.
Thank you. Please be seated. We acknowledge that the land on which we gather is a sacred indigenous place located within the ancestral territories of the sovereign Sac and Fox, Ho-Chunk, and Potawatomi nations as recognized by treaties between those nations and the United States of America. This morning, we are learning more about the senseless shooting of 13 people in a grocery store in Buffalo, New York. 11 were black and two were white, 10 have died. At a celebration of black excellence on Friday, Mez Tesfe reminded us that these senseless acts cut more deeply and require additional resilience from people of color. Please join me in a moment of silence to recognize the lives that were taken only because of a white supremacist act of pure hatred and the lives that must go on without mothers, fathers, sisters, and brothers. Black lives matter. Welcome. So here is a sentence we will never take for granted again. It is great to be here all together in all three dimensions. One of the most important things a college president needs to pay attention to is the happiness of the faculty. It can be hot under medieval robes. Towards that end, here is something I never thought I would say. Faculty and staff should feel free to disrobe at their pleasure. We're going to do little else over the next two hours, but celebrate. The metrics for success are easy. Are your faces tired from smiling? Are your hands raw from clapping? How many proud pictures have you texted back to family and friends who can't be here? Really proud pictures. And the very best way to start is to celebrate our 250 spectacular graduates. It is about to be a great day to be a fully credentialed college graduate and class of 2022. You are about to be exactly that. This day is all about you and we are here to celebrate you. Parents, you have spawned a college graduate. Welcome to this 172nd commencement at Wisconsin's oldest and finest college honoring Beloit College's graduating class of 2022. It takes an army of Beloiters to make this commencement as special and meaningful as it is and will be. Among those who have made this possible include our peerless staff in housekeeping and grounds and security and maintenance and student affairs and communications and marketing and food service and alumni relations and the list goes on. Would you please join me in thanking all of these inspiring colleagues and friends.
The first sentence of the college's mission statement traverses an arc from Beloiters as students to Beloiters as alumni. I love it. It is the best mission statement in America. Beloit College engages the imagination, intelligence, and curiosity of its students. You, empowering them. You, to lead fulfilling lives. You, as alumni, marked by high achievement, personal responsibility, and public contribution in a diverse society, an arc of a life of purposeful consequence, just like Tory Keys, class of 2003, your commencement speaker from whom I am keeping you. So, in what may seem like an utter non sequitur, travel back with me in time to spring break in March of 2020. A short four weeks after the powerhouse was formally opened, while you were on spring break and on the cusp of what was looking more and more like a pandemic, the college, Eric and Cecil and Erica and Tara, me and others made the call to tell students we believed it was unsafe to return to campus and that we would finish the semester from a distance. Almost immediately, while faculty and staff were heroically revolutionizing ways to deliver an education in the best way and most Beloitish way possible, using vastly different pedagogies. The conversation with Eric and Cecil and all turned to how could we responsibly and safely bring us back together as a campus, the way the magic happens in the fall of 2020. Two things were obvious to us. First, the health and well-being of our community, being together in person, was going to depend above all else on responsible, caring behavior by nearly everyone. There was no second place. And second, issuing presidential edicts about behavior would be profoundly stupid and ineffective. Imagine yourselves, class of 2022, actually listening to me. You have to be kidding. We are, after all, Beloit College. This led to the most important moment in the last two and a half years. We asked student leadership to team along with a broad swath of other students to develop a statement of culture and behavioral expectations that they wanted, a statement of how they believed they wanted to stay safe and together in the best ways that the expected conditions allowed and that followed the evolving science and social science and humanities what followed was one of the most important documents in the history of Bloit College. It was authentic, honest, realistic, caring, responsible, smart, hopeful, and simply brilliant. Its heart and soul was a complete commitment to doing what it took to start together in August and finish together in late May, six feet apart, is a boatload better than 600 miles apart. Right, Cecil? Out of this came a tagline, a mantra, a credo for the ages, self-care is community care. And out of this came no evidence across the entire pandemic, variant after variant of community spread of COVID, none. The largest number of cases we ever had at a time was five. Naomi Nielengal. Yeah. 
Naomi, a rock star sitting right in front of me, co-authored an op-ed published in the Daily Beast, making the same point. We embrace students and student leadership to establish how best to be together in ways no other college did, and we navigated the pandemic togetherness as a community better than any other college did, period. Drop the mic. Making self-care, community care, a real thing was the secret sauce. Members of the class of 2022 were essential contributors and leaders of the statement of cultural and behavioral expectations, but, but it was adopted, embraced, brought to life, put into practice day after day for over two years by nearly all members of the class of 2022, you have lived that credo that in fact, self-care is community care. So all of this is really important to memorialize, but there is a purely commencement message related reason for making a big honking deal out of this because I believe that with just a little reflection, it is easy to see that self-care is community care is a kind of north star for a life of purposeful consequence, the bedrock of a ton of really good things. Here's an important example. Surely climate change and the ways you helpfully engage with mitigating and navigating the impacts of climate change and its causes will be part of your future. You're making responsible decisions about your personal health in the midst of a pandemic and the spillover benefits for the community derived from those decisions is conceptually identical to making responsible decisions about your use of fossil fuels and the spillover benefits that has for your communities, including future communities. Self-care is community care is about climate change. And surely your future will be profoundly influenced by how technology is developed and used. Just imagine what might be different if your communities with whom you interact employed a self-care as community care approach to the use of social media. Conceptually, there is no difference between how you and Beloit College community navigated the pandemic to how you and the communities you are a part of navigate future uses of social media. You can be an influencer that is actually meaningful. And even I might get to the point where I have a Twitter account. Self-care is community care is about the future value of technology. And to add one more example, the college's Becoming Better Anti-Racism Action Plan is chock full of self-care is community care ethos. How you make decisions about understanding and acting to dismantle racial injustices and inequities in your world is maybe the only way that institutional racism gets ferreted out of our justice system, our medical systems, and our educational systems who take just three institutions where evidence of racial injustice is nearly impossible to dispute in an honest way. Taking responsibility for you and your role to root out racism in connection with community racism is the key. Self-care is community care, is about the essence of racial justice. And because this matters to me, I learned this from Dr. Deborah Majid, who lived this and mentored this every day of her uniquely impactful life. You get the point. The second sentence of Beloit College's mission statement brings us home. Our emphasis on the integration of knowledge with experience 
and close collaboration among peers, professors, and staff equips our students to approach the complex problems of the world ethically and thoughtfully. Your two-year experience of approaching the unbelievably complex problem of a pandemic with a governing ethos and practice with which you dubbed self-care is community care is a poster child for integrating knowledge and experience in collaboration with peers, faculty, and staff, a poster child, and it positions you better than any of us could have imagined to approach the complex problems of the world like climate change, the impact of technology, and racial justice just to take three pretty important parts of your future, ethically and thoughtfully. You have made this college yours. The mission of this college yours, like no one else ever. You wrote these commencement remarks. We talk all the time about being student-centric and all the time about the importance of you owning your college experience, taking agency over your college experience. And to paraphrase Carly Simon, out of context, nobody ever did it better. Class of 2022, you are the class for the ages. You did not just get through the pandemic. You gloriously transcended the pandemic. When the next history of Beloit College is written, the dog-eared pages that everyone turns to will be about you. And just wait until this mission-centric class, this class that brought to life the essence of Beloit College, takes its next step or two or three into your futures, what a difference you are going to make all around things that desperately need a difference to be made. And you did this individually and collectively. Self-care is community care, a roadmap for your futures. How brilliant is that? I cannot wait to congratulate you as you cross this stage in just a few more minutes. What an honor, more than ever. Turtles all the way down. Thank you, class of 2022. Thank you. Tori Key is one of our own, an alumna whose service and dedication to this institution and to our country through her current role in the federal government quickens my heart with pride and inspires my soul. We recognize her as a leader whose life is a ringing endorsement for the combination of talent, ambition, character, and a Beloit education. Tori grew up in the city of Beloit and was educated at the College of Beloit, making her a Beloiter squared, exponentially remarkable, an exemplary graduate of Beloit Memorial High School. Tori sharpened and expanded her skills here as a McNair Scholar, Senior Class Officer, Leader of Black Students United, and the list goes on. She was honored at her own graduation in 2003 as the student who best exemplifies the ideals of a liberal arts education. She won the Martha Peterson Prize. To say that Tori Key could do just about anything is distinctively accurate. 
and she has chosen to serve. After completing her Master of Public Affairs degree and building on her background in private and public finance, she rose to her current position of leadership as senior analyst and advisor to the chief financial officer at the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office in Washington, D.C. Throughout a demanding and impactful career to date, she has reserved time and energy to serve Beloit College with integrity, brilliance, and empathy first as an active young alumna, then as a member of the alumni board, and now as a member of the college's board of trustees. We are grateful for her service and thrilled to have this opportunity to honor her on the advice and wisdom of Beloit's stellar senior class officers. Please welcome your commencement speaker to the podium, my good friend, Tori Key, class of 2003. Good morning. Good morning first to the graduates in the class of 2022. I am very happy and humbled to be here and I thank you for the invitation. Yes. <laughs> Good morning also to the parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, cousins, siblings, faculty, staff, loved ones, all of you who support these graduates as they sit here today and soon cross the stage. It is a beautiful day to be a Beloiter. So I will first say thank you to Scott for that very humbling introduction. I also thank the senior class officers. I got to meet many of them on Zoom a few weeks ago. They're energetic, they're hopeful, they're talented, they give me hope for the future. Since I accepted this invitation a few weeks ago, I learned that I landed on your radar through Deepakshi Bardawaj, someone that I have fallen into an easy and loose mentoring relationship since October 2020. Over the past year and a half of Zoom meetings and emails, I'm unsure who's actually mentoring whom. See, my guidance and insights to Deepakshi are always honest and imbued with, the, with an intimate vulnerability that comes from having to step back and look at my life through the lens of someone who hasn't yet crossed this stage. They are grounded in my deep hope that she and all of those around her will be able to bypass, step over, step through the challenges that I've encountered in my life and career. When Scott announced this honor to the college last week, Deepakshi sent me a quick email filled with exclamation points and her classic earnestness. She said, and I quote, you are one of the most important mentors I have and you will be speaking at my graduation. I cannot express how happy this makes me. I'm really looking forward to it and I'm screaming with joy inside. <laughs> I do not know if the intimate vulnerability of our Zoom calls will scale to this audience, but I will give it a try. And if you want to check out now, it's a good time to slide your AirPods in. I'll be brief. <laughs> I've spent a few weeks fretting about what to say in this forum. When I mentioned this honor to a few friends and trusted colleagues, all the suggestions came so swiftly. Say this, don't say this, put it this way, don't put it that way. Above all, the common refrain was, be brief. <laughs> a lot of material ended up on the cutting room floor between last night and this morning. But here I stand, leaning into my personal word of the year, courage. I come to you today, as Scott mentioned, from Washington, DC, my home for the last 17 years. Coincidentally, 17 is the number of years I lived in Wisconsin, 15 here in Beloit. When people ask me where is home, my instinct is still to say Wisconsin or Beloit, but mathematically that changes this year. I am an adopted daughter of Beloit. I was not born here. My family roots here are barely a generation deep, but my anchor through it all, the persistent thread that binds me to this city, to this place, is Beloit College. My family's roots are in Mississippi but I was born in Memphis, Tennessee, where most of my family lives today. 
My arrival in Beloit was intentional. My mother, only slightly younger than I am today, brought my sister and me here looking for a better life. A marriage that wasn't proving quite solvent, she decided at not quite 40, with limited savings, no family wealth, no college degree, and two young children, she said, enough. I can do better than this. I want more for myself and for my children. We left Memphis in 1988 to come up north. A favorite uncle who had done his own great migration in the 1960s offered us safe harbor and a fresh start in this laughably small city with a funny name. Beloit wasn't immediately friendly to us. In her quest for safe housing and good schools for her kids, my mother had to file, and she won, a discrimination lawsuit and a small settlement against a white landlord who refused to rent a house to us, repeatedly saying the house was no longer available, even as he kept advertising it in the paper. My entry into Beloit Public Schools wasn't the smoothest either. In the second grade, as a precocious seven-year-old, fresh off of Interstate I-55, I found myself pulled from my second grade classroom and shuffled to a small back room where, as I later told my mother, Mama, today this lady came and got me from class and made me sit and practice word cards with her. My mom's reaction was immediate. What? Let me go up to that school. You see, that was the first and the last time I received pull-out services for an assumed speech pathology that was actually just a southern accent. Beloit wasn't ready. Without the benefit of the social science evidence that I dissected as a Beloit College student, my mother knew that institutional attempts to other me so early in my education could have immeasurably harmful consequences for my entire life. To this day, I much prefer to write, to deliberate, to enjoy the delayed gratification of bringing words to impact without the impatience of the listening ear, which makes this moment incredibly challenging for me. Yet here I stand. As my bio mentioned, my introduction to Beloit College came by way of the Help Yourself program, Preparing for this speech today, I looked upon a 1989 article in the Christian Science Monitor by Beloit's eighth president, Roger Hull. He describes the program's origins. A group at Beloit College put the program together in response to the national lament about declining numbers of minority students on college campuses. By reaching into the fourth grade, we felt we would be able to help change the lives of minority students early on provide future leadership for the Beloit community, and make the college a more comfortable place for minority students. It is not lost on me 30 years later, as I sit at the table as one of the newest and youngest trustees, that Beloit College continues the work of becoming a better and more comfortable place for minority students. The whole article reminded me just how much time I have spent running around this campus starting in the fourth grade. Hours and hours of after school programming, Saturday sessions for students and parents required, and a four week intensive summer program every year from grade four through high school. It was a huge time commitment for both me and my mother. But with our shallow family roots in Beloit, Help Yourself offered me an unruly extended family of aunties, uncles, a no-nonsense father figure in the incomparable Hugo Henry, and a gaggle of cousins. While the name Help Yourself speaks to the troubled American ideal of bootstrap individualism divorced of social systems, the reality was much more communal, the knitting of a social safety net for groups that didn't otherwise have one. When I came to Beloit College as a college student, miraculously with three other Help Yourself graduates, I found I trained as an economist. I never found community in that academic space. That's not to say I didn't excel or do well or make enduring relationships. It's more in recognition that Homo economicus, the classic rational man in economics, 
just didn't do it for me. The unfeeling, rational, economic man who maximizes his utility in a world of perfect information and the absence of bias did not translate to my understanding of the world as a young black woman. For me, choosing to study economics at a liberal arts college was an exercise in respectability, a hedge against my family's lifetime of struggle. Get the degree that is most likely to pay the bills. Follow your heart later. With a respectable degree in my back pocket, I minored in what was then women's studies and is now critical identity studies, a discipline introduced to me by the now retired Catherine Orr. I took a religious studies course with the incomparable Dr. Deborah Majid, one of my favorites. I studied abroad in Rennes, France, and did a year-long internship at the Beloit Domestic Violence Shelter, where I tried foolishly to connect my economics training with my women's studies training to teach financial literacy to women whose most basic financial needs weren't being met. The hubris of my 21-year-old self had no match. I left Beloit College in 2003, infused with the promise of my liberal arts degree and armed with those classic Beloiter traits, discernment, writing prowess, cultural competence, adaptability, and the word du jour in our current moment, resilience. Just like you, I sat in this audience and listened to my commencement speaker. At the time, I just took him as an old white guy talking about how he wanted to be an astronaut. For all I knew, he was 50, which from my current perch, is not that old. I don't recall his name or much about his story, but his theme was persistence. He recounted in great detail each of the times he applied and was rejected before he was finally accepted into NASA's space program. It was an exercise in persistence to keep count. I wish I could come to you today with a simple story of achieving my life's dream already, but truthfully, as I tell Dipakshi, I'm still on my journey. I am a high-achieving federal government employee at a high-performing agency where I get to work with extremely talented and devoted public servants in the name of global innovation and temporary property rights. Each year, I am awarded for outstanding performance and special achievement awards for my willingness to go above and beyond, navigating swim lanes and small p politics well above my pay grade. To be blunt, I punch above my weight and I know it. But I'm not living my dream right now. It is a dream, it's someone's dream. Someone would love to have my seat, but it's not mine. Right now, my dream, rather right now someone else's dream, a seat at the senior leadership table of a $4 billion self-funded federal agency near the nation's capital is not too shabby for a first-generation college student and a reluctant economist. But I am at a crossroads right now. I have amassed enough resources through that diligence, that hard work, through the Beloit degree, through the graduate degree. I have the knowledge and experience, the professional and social networks, and relative wealth through savings and hard work to dare to consider a new path forward. Much like you, I need to decide what that is. As I stand here today in my rented regalia, Grateful that it's not 90 degrees again. The one thing I can tell you for sure is that there are no right answers. Life is a series of decisions and choices that compound the longer you live. With each one, you open some doors and you close others, sometimes permanently. When you get locked out of one door, it doesn't necessarily mean that you made a bad choice. It might mean you just need to look for a window. On the whole, a Beloit education enables you to both identify and open doors. Here's a secret I'll tell you about. I have been stalking Beloit College for years. Thanks to Google, I receive a daily email alert that informs me of every electronic mention of Beloit College. The overwhelming majority of them are death announcements and obituaries, unfortunately but I've always had a morbid fascination with obituaries. Concise summaries of legacy, not usually written by the deceased. 
Links to the round table help me keep up with life on campus in a way that the polished dog and pony show of trustee meetings does not allow. When I do manage to stumble upon an article by a living Beloiter who is doing great things in the world, I get excited. I quietly celebrate their victories. For example, my low-tech snooping introduced me to Genia Stevens, class of 2000, who launched Rock, Car Rock County Jumpstart, an incubator for black business owners in the greater Beloit area. Not too long ago, I got an alert that told me that Joe Davis, class of 2010, who already does the play-by-play -play for the LA Dodgers, will call this year's World Series. An announcement that fulfills a lifelong dream of his that was nurtured by his education here at Beloit. As I stand here before you today, class of 2022, I come to issue a challenge, three of them actually, that I hope will spur more headlines for me to get excited about when I read emails. I want to read about how you are making your mark on the world. I want to take comfort in your youthful zest for life and the cautious hope as you enter a world that none of us has seen before. The balance of my speech, and I promise I'm almost done, <laughs> will be devoted to three challenges that I will issue to you. Unlike TikTok challenges, these aren't likely to physically hurt you. My first challenge to you, class of 2022, is for you to push back against status quo thinking. From my vantage, the status quo usually maintains privilege and power in the hands of a few while leaving others wanting and waiting. In this moment of global disease and death, in this moment of increasing political polarity, in this moment of local and global state-sanctioned violence, in this moment of contracting reproductive rights, in this moment of scientific discovery on this planet and others, in this moment of fear and uncertainty. We need you more than ever to pull from your well of knowledge and creativity and bring the full power of your Beloit College liberal arts education to bear on these challenges. The major and minor con combinations listed in the program for this class gave me so much joy. You all are a creative bunch. I got excited scrolling through the list of names, hometowns, and fields of study. V. May is graduating summa cum laude with a double major in anthropology and quantitative economics. I cannot wait to see how she changes the world. Who among you graduates will decolonize artificial intelligence? Is it you, Abdulaziz? Maybe it's Litsi Carranza Torres, who will make sure the robots don't succumb to the same deductive, racist, sexist, heterosexist tropes easily espoused by technologists in the name of efficient algorithms. Who among you will make sure that the metaverse is not just a toxic or more toxic than the natural world that it will eventually replace? Is it you, Erica Corral? I read about you in Fortune last week. <laughs> you were talking about your summer experience at MIT and being the only woman in the classroom sometimes. The article quoted you as saying, I have a really bad case of imposter syndrome sometimes. Guess what? So do I. There are ways to manage it. It's a common but very manageable affliction. Surround yourself in people who boost you up instead of pull you down. I challenge you to not let it stop you from leaving your mark on the world in the biggest way possible. I was really happy that the article included with you saying, I'm just as good as anybody else in the field. Yes, Erica, you are. <laughs> and so too are each of you in your own unapologetically Beloit way. Who among you will design social policies and programs that acknowledge and uphold an individual's humanity rather than punish and shame them for not overcoming social systems that work so persistently toward their undoing? Is it you, Aaron Haltzmuller? I challenge you, Jamia Irving, Jack Eldridge, and Alyssa Flores Tirado. I challenge you to find ways to tell convincing stories of hope and opportunity, 
to people who have turned their back on both the government and the media, to be a force for good after so many instances of corruption and wrongdoing. When clean air is a commodity to be bought and sold, when your literal ability to breathe is tied to your ability to pay, which is in itself tied to the choices and opportunities of generations of people before you, who among you environmental justice and citizenship majors will step up with equitable solutions to public health and wellness? Is it Rahul Basu or Sid Clark? The status quo is fiercely protected by law, custom, and those who benefit from its spoils. We are out of easy button solutions, if we ever had them. The world you are stepping in today is much more complex and riddled with inconsistencies, inconveniences, institutionalized unfairness, hate, despair, and brokenhearted people. My challenge to you is to walk into this murkiness knowing all that you face and find a way to bring light to darkness. My second challenge, mature your resilience, the resilience that has seen you through these last four years. If anything have shown, has shown us, this pandemic shows us that stability is fickle. The morbid ticker tape of COVID deaths exceeds six million worldwide and just reached the one million mark domestically leaving a trail of grief and broken lives unequally distributed across the society. While future changes may not be as dramatic as a global pandemic, micro level changes can still shake your foundation. It may be a favorite boss leaving, your dissertation chair going to a different university. It could throw you off balance. So my second challenge for you is to mature those practices that have served you here. This graduating class is smaller than usual. I know you lost several students along the way. They didn't come back when we went to hybrid and virtual. Unlike the classes that remain behind you, your class had a full year of COVID-free living on campus. You can actually mourn what you lost from your freshman year. But you stayed. You stayed here, you figured out a way to make it work. You already have some bona fides when it comes to resilience and adaptability. You live the ex academic experience that was mods. You stayed on this campus, in this city, during one of the most traumatic moments for racial justice in decades. You leaned into the mantra, as Scott just said, that self-care is community care in a way that I wish the country writ large would have done. When your sense of stability is threatened yet again, and it will be, how do you stay upright? When the news of the day manages to one-up itself, whether on racial injustice, mass violence, or political terror, I challenge you to lean into the foundation of resilience that you have started here and continue to fortify it as you move forward in life. The third and final challenge I issue for you today. I want you to pause and take in the love, the pride, the admiration that is radiating around you right now. This is your day. The people gathered here today are celebrating you, your accomplishments, your persistence, and your journey. Nate Johnson, you're out there. I met your mother, Catherine, last week. She is so proud of you today. I could have sworn I saw her skipping across campus when we left the last trustee meeting. My last challenge for you is to find a way to express gratitude for the people in your life who helped you get here and stay here. This was not a solitary pursuit. I know how much your faculty and staff pour into each and every one of you day after day, semester after semester, even as they endure the double whammy of institutional austerity and record-breaking inflation. What keeps them in this seat, what keeps them supporting you, is a love and a pride in wanting you to do well. Don't take that for granted. If anyone, faculty, family, staff, has in any way been a part of your success, find a way to say thank you. Saying thank you not only offers a gift 
to the person you say it to, it fills your cup as well. For my part, I am fortunate to still be able to stand here today with my mother in the audience, still my greatest fan, Ann Heckler. Her sacrifice, her cross-country leap of faith, her willingness to fight for her children at every turn have enabled me to get to this point in my life and have the privilege of choice in what I do next. Thank you. I am finally closing. The real show is about to begin. I told you about a story of generational resilience, how I stood on my mother's shoulders to access the privileges of opportunity and choice, privileges that my world-class education at this institution enabled. I told you that I continue to question my own path and whether I'm doing enough for my family, my community, and the world. I told you that despite my middle class trappings that so many lower income first generation students seek when they finally finish a degree, I still challenge myself to find ways to act more intentionally and with greater impact, essentially to leave my mark on the world. Informed by my own experience and those I've collected in community with others like and unlike me, I issued you three challenges. I dared you to strike back against the status quo. I challenge you to bring all that makes you Beloiters through and through to the table when taking on challenges and opportunities of the future. I urge you to be resilient when you face setbacks big and small and it feels like your efforts are in vain. I advise you to think through the practices that got you through these last four years to see which ones will serve you after you leave. And finally, I challenge you to express gratitude to those who helped you on your journey, to those who pushed for you when you didn't want to fight anymore, to those who helped you get unstuck when the changes didn't come quickly enough and your energy started to wane. My story is not yours and yours is not mine. Your impact may be global, headline worthy. You may be in the next New York Times, Wall Street Journal, Forbes article. Or it may be hyper-local. Your impact may be on your family on whatever small community you decide to settle in. In either case, class of 2022, I look forward to reading, watching, and learning how you're leaving your mark in the world. I thank you for this opportunity and wish you all the best. Thank you so much, Tori. I'll take one of your pieces of advice right this very second. And I'm filled with gratitude. Um, as Tori mentioned, with us today is one of the great heroes of Tori's remarks, Tori's mom, Glenda Key. So I wonder if we can recognize Glenda, who's sitting over here. Glenda told me she's preparing her commencement remarks for next year's commencement right now. I look forward to it. The Administrative Policy Manual of Bloyd College provides that honorary degrees may be granted to those whose achievements are extraordinary and who represent by their lives and works the ideals for which Bloyd College stands. I now present our candidate recommended for an honorary degree at today's ceremony, Tori Key. Tori Key's commitment to civil service extends nearly to the beginning of her career. Since earning her master's of public affairs degree from the University of Wisconsin-Madison's La Follette School of Public Affairs, her, her work in private and public finance has earned her recognition in Washington, D.C. and her alma mater. 
The Young Alumni Award recipient and Board of Trustees member is currently a senior analyst and advisor to the Chief Financial Officer at the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office. It was at Beloit that she became passionate about the intersection of finance and public service through her Duffy partnership. She coached survivors of domestic violence at a local shelter, giving them personal finance and legal advice. She has since consulted for federal and state entities with intellectual prowess, level-headed practicality, and remarkable kindness. We thank Tori Key for her contributions to Beloit College and to the citizens she serves. We are proud to call her a graduate of Beloit College and pleased to award her with an honorary Doctor of Humane Letters degree. So being ahead of the game, I'm going to read the formal uh, presentation. As president of Bloy College, it is an honor and a pleasure to already have conferred upon you with this Bloy College diploma. Ta-da. The decree of doctors of letters honoris causa by authorizing the chief marshal to have invested in you the appropriate hood. So congratulations, Tori Key and Beloit College. Since 1982, the Warren Miller Blue Skies Award has recognized a senior who fosters good cheer and good humor and brings a light touch to our everyday lives on campus. The award's namesake is a 1960 Bloy College alumnus whose witty and insightful cartoons appeared in the New Yorker magazine for more than four decades. The roster of winners is a remarkable group of alumni and today we are pleased to add one more. The 2022 Warren Miller Blue Skies Award goes to Silas Say from Colville, Washington. Silas, please join us on this stage to receive your honor. an outside chance Silas will get out. This is what he receives. So Silas, the college's student life staff selects the Blue Skies Award recipient. The wide variety of recommendations they received about Silas consistently use two of the same words, often in the exact order. Positive attitude. And as many of us learned, at the senior gala, one heck of a dancer. He is the Macarena King. Yeah. Woo. Silas brought his upbeat perspective, listening skills, and signature smile to the many. It's there we go. Sorry, okay. Silas. We're good. We're good. We're good. It's good. Thank y'all. Yeah, that appears on social media. Your degree is rescinded. <laughs> to the many aspects of college life, fortunate enough to receive his excessive energy and attention. <laughs> he served as an RA, football team captain, advanced mentoring program, teaching assistant, student excellence and leadership program, mentor, founder of several clubs and organizations, and more. He is a four-year letter winner in football and last week received the Ed DeGeorge Service and Scholar Athlete Award for his combination of academic and athletic comp accomplishments and dedication to service. One nominator describes Silas as incredibly silly. And good, and good looking. And phenomenally good looking, yet mature, determined, upbeat and positive. There's that word again, Silas. Another wrote that Silas is friendly and conversational and tries hard to include those around him who may not be as talkative. 
In a profile on the college's homepage, Silas said, what really inspires him is the potential in others. He also said, the best part about Beloit is seeing the community that I love, the community that I belong to, and just being appreciative of that. A biology and health and society double major with a Spanish minor. He will soon begin furthering his dream of helping others by studying to become a physical therapist right after going to Granada, Spain on Beloit Summer Brock program in Spain. Please join me in congratulating Silas Say on receiving the 2022 Blue Skies Award. He loves you, Dad. <laughs> Members of the Beloit College Class of 1981 established the Martha Peterson Prize to honor Beloit's seventh college president. Tori Key, remember, was one of these winners. The prize is awarded to a senior who best exemplifies the college's liberal arts traditions through academic achievements and as an active contributor to the campus community. Faculty members nominate students for this prize and members of the senior class vote on the final recipient. This year, the Martha Peterson Prize goes to Anna Downing from Alpine, Texas. Anna, where are you? There you are, sorry. So Anna graduates summa cum laude, the highest academic distinction with a double major in environmental biology and studio art. Her art professors and advisors call her an excellent and diligent art student, a fantastic printmaker, and an engaged, insightful thinker who is open to new possibilities. Her biology professors agree that she is a stellar student and always willing to help others. She demonstrated this in part in 2020 by serving as an outstanding teaching assistant in introductory biology, despite the year's extraordinary circumstances. Anna uses art to draw attention to important issues, both on campus and beyond. In a course on ephemeral art, she co-created an installation featuring an orange painted wheelchair. It was placed at the bottom of stairs around campus to shine a light on ongoing accessibility impediments. She launched another project critiquing the whiteness of Hollywood that was featured in the Arts and Anti-Racism Showcase called Reimaginings. She's an active member and leader of Theta Pi Gamma Sorority. And she has been a valuable and productive collections assistant for the college's Wright Museum of Art. Anna's biology advisor says that she embodies one of Beloit's core learning outcomes. She is a productive collaborator. She inspires others by collaborating with a quiet yet effective approach that pushes her classmates to produce their best work. Please. Join me in congratulating Anna Downing on receiving this most deserved honor. The senior class has selected Martina Polito to give the opening address to her classmates at commencement today. Martina, will you please come forward?
this year's recipient of the Sarah Wallbank Memorial Prize in Geology and co-recipient of the Richard C. Stenson Prize in Environmental Geology. Martina is a driven student of environmental geology and a staunch advocate for the environment. The San Diego, California native, hey Martina, recently conducted a symposium project evaluating the dangerous metals in Virginia's Chesapeake Watership Dams. Her research under her advisor, Jim Rugby, earned her recognition at the Keck Geology Consortium administered through McAllister College. Beyond the classroom, Martina has le held leadership positions in a number of campus groups from Geo Club, come on over, to the Buccaneer Boathouse. She organized this year's Earth Week events, among others throughout the year, through the Sustainability Channel and advocated for sustainability focused campus projects. And she also played trumpet for Beloit's jazz band. But Martina may be most remembered by her friends and professors for her good humor, community engagement, and strong sense of self. Jim Rugby says of Martina, she has traveled through her time at Beloit with an air of joy and mischief that made all of our research meetings and classes fun. We cannot wait to see what kinds of good trouble she will stir up next. Will you please join me in welcoming Martina Polito to the stage. Just one moment, please. <laughs> okay. Okay, okay. I'm ready. I'm ready. So, buenos dias, everyone. Good morning. Buenos dias. Primero. Uh, me gustaría agradecer a mi abuelita Martina, mi mamá Rocío y mi papá Miguel. La Biblia dice, honra a tu padre y a tu madre y espero que mis logros hoy, mi, licen mi licenciatura y la vida que crié en Beloit College te honren hoy. Gracias. Okay, I'm ready. Okay, okay. Today, I'm thinking past tomorrow. <laughs> and there's a lot to look back on as we celebrate ourselves today. And we can all agree on one thing, that there's nothing particularly easy about living through unprecedented times. So, I commend you, class of 2022, I commend you all for pushing through the late nights, the small town drama, the monochromatic food, <laughs> and the brutally cold and snowy walks to a class you were always late for. <laughs> um, well, COVID was no box race either. <laughs> How can we move on from the severe lack of friends, neighbors, and community. Countless hours spent in the same chair on the same screen, eating cold fries from an oversized plastic box. You're just trying to finish the damn thing. And it won't be easy to move on from that. But we're Beloiters, and we were sculpted for lifelong success. So, Let's honor our professors and mentors' hard work today by thinking about tomorrow. Tomorrow, or maybe right now, we'll bring tearful goodbyes and our last room checkout process as we face a long trip of transition. The following week will bring summer fun as reality slowly sets in. 
and this next year will be unexpected. We can think past tomorrow and make plans and promises and create expectations for ourselves, but nothing will truly prepare us. But I'm here to remind you, a Beloiter expects the unexpected. This year's graduates have no lack of productive collaborators, effective communicators, and creative problem solvers. You, dear Beloiters, are agile, and you're prepared for future-focused action. You have been set up for lifelong success, and you will adapt. But, of course, learning to adapt is never, ever going to be easy. So today, while we all celebrate your Beloit accomplishments, I want to reflect on my own blossoming Beloiter era. As a first year student, I kept a journal documenting the everyday struggles of a newly independent young lady. And let me just tell you now, a lot of it was about my latest romances. <laughs> More importantly, I was dedicated to writing. I would write and write and write every single day, which is typical new Beloiter behavior, eager, excited, and reflecting only on the day's work and not preparing for what lies ahead. And trust me, my freshman academic transcript deeply reflects what that means. As a second year, I helped lead a backpacking trip through the Shawnee National Forest over spring break. This was March 2020, of course. And I brought my journal with me. I couldn't miss a single day of writing. You can imagine my surprise as we emerged from the forest, only to be met with an inbox full of emails explaining why we could not return to campus. Accepting our new reality was a struggle, was a struggle not only because I felt a little blindsided, I was without connection for five days in the forest, but I had never faced such an overwhelmingly obvious and aggressive change in my young adult life. Abandoned, unprepared to adapt, and overpowered by a looming sense of doom, it would take me another year to fill my 200-page journal. But I'd like to share my final remarks in my of from my, straight from my journal as we look to the future. So I wrote this final journal entry at the end of fall of 2020. It was created in an attempt to gather the courage and motivation to move forward, despite the many months of failed attempts to adapt. Clearly, I've learned to adapt since then, which is why I can celebrate myself today. But please allow my soft-hearted words to lead our way. The date is October 25th, 2020. Dear Martina, writing on this last page feels very significant. So much has happened since you began writing in this journal, and you didn't document it all, but that's okay, because your heart knows what happened. I'm proud of you for being a friend, a good daughter, a resilient first-generation student. You've gone so far, and you've done things you could never imagine you'd ever be able to do, and met a community full of people you'll remember forever. And you're growing. Life is hard, much harder than you'd ever imagine it would be. But you have so much love to give and a passion for living a beautiful and fulfilling life. Please do not give up on that. Remember to pray, to drink water, and to find ways to express your love. There's nothing more beautiful than watching you grow. With all of my love, congratulations, Beloit College Class of 2022. There's nothing more beautiful than watching you grow. I'm now pleased to introduce 
Tim Smith, class of 91, president of the Bloyd College Alumni Association Board of Directors. Tim. Okay, class of 2022, I am officially the last speaker standing in between you and your diplomas, so I'll try and be brief here. You're welcome. Yeah. So as Scott mentioned, I'm, I'm Tim Smith, I'm class of 1991, and I have the honor of being the current president of our Alumni Association Board. I represent tw the 22 members of our Alumni Association Board of Directors and the nearly 20,000 living alumni from Beloit College. We are so excited to have over 200 of you ready to join the distinguished ranks of our Beloit College alumni in just a few short minutes. What a journey you've all had over the last couple of years. You very wisely dealt with a global pandemic and kept our community safe. Talk about courage and commitment to one another. That's truly a Beloit thing to do. I promise that being an alumni will be far easier to navigate than the last couple of years have been. I thought I would just take a couple minutes and uh, share a few perspectives on what it means to be a Beloit alum and some of the commitments we share to one another and to the college we love. So what does this mean to you? Inevitably, you'll soon see a Beloit College license plate, a sticker, a sweatshirt, somewhere out in the wild, and you'll likely feel compelled to find out who that person is, when do they graduate, and you'll talk about your time on campus. Coming from the small gem of a school, we find we all have shared experiences to relate to, regardless of whether we graduated in the 1960s, the 90s, or today. This is one of the many great things you'll soon find out about being a Beloit alum. Whether you connect with Beloiters in person, on a Zoom, God forbid, uh, Facebook, or LinkedIn, you'll find the conversation always goes towards our unique experiences we had at this small but mighty campus just north of the Illinois border. Your favorite professors, challenging research projects, amazing time with friends, maybe even time at the coffee house it was open during your four years. One of the cool recent trends I've seen on the, the Beloit Alumni Facebook page has been the post pictures of the college and our students from that period of time. And I think one of the immediate realiza realizations I've had in seeing hundreds of these photos, besides how quirky and authentic Beloiters really are, is just how much we all have in common, how much our similar experiences we've had, and to me, I think that also means that the Beloit Way has stood the test of time. As alumni, this also means that you have a built-in network upon which you can lean. Whether it be for professional or personal support, getting together socially, it doesn't matter. The Beloit Alumni Network is here for you. Let me make this real for you. Soon, probably many of you will be heading to new cities where you don't know anyone. Don't be at all shy to reach out to your fellow Beloiters on Facebook or email, I'm sure the college can help with that. Since chances are high that a Beloiter lives in that city you might be looking at and, and moving to, and they can help you navigate. For example, heading to Pakistan, look up Farooq Pasha, class of 2005 and one of our board members. Heading to India, maybe Mumbai, look up Jishnu Guha, class of 2013. Heading back here to beautiful Beloit, Laura Grube will always have the door open, and I'm pretty sure it's an open invite, and she's going to love me for that comment. Use the Deloitte, the Deloitte, the, use the Beloit network. I work for a company called Beloit, or Deloitte, sorry. Um, <laughs> want some advice on a job, a career path, a field of study? Use the Beloit network. There are Beloiters all around the world doing incredibly interesting things, and they all really do enjoy being a resource for our recent graduates. And we hope that you will be here to support the Beloit Network as well. We thrive when we have creative input from you and your unique contributions. So what do we need from our alumni? I think there's two main things that each alumni need to, to do. And one is to stay connected to the college. It's easy as you go out to get disconnected. And then to contribute to the college. Contribution could be financial, but there are many other forms of contributing to the the organization, helping engage with prospective students by sharing your experience, acting as a mentor to current students, helping out other alumni, acting as a sounding board to the college, or serving on the alumni with the Alumni Association as a volunteer or a board member like me. The possibilities are endless. We just ask that you give yourselves to the college and to other alumni. 
That's the energy that, bakes, that makes the Beloit Alumni Network so strong. I'm so proud of you. I've, I've had a great time listening to the speeches today and, and to see all that you've accomplished together. And now that you're about to be alumni, you can look forward to a long lifetime of friendships and connections. Please make the most of it. Be active and be all in for Beloit. Welcome to all of you to the Beloit College Alumni Association. We're glad to have you join many of our alumni who cherish and support this college. Thank you and congrats. Thank you, Tim. So uh, Tim's our last speaker, but we have another event before uh, the diplomas. I invite the members of the Boyd College Commencement Ensemble to come up on stage for a musical performance. <laughs> While they make their way up to the stage, I think we should thank all of the performers and speakers at yesterday's wonderful Belois Hurrah. And also a thank you goes to Hannah Kang for her wonderful cover art for today's commencement program. Okay, and this is gonna be welcome, I suspect. Please stand as the Bloy College Commencement Ensemble sings Domine Salva and Fac. Good morning, everyone. You may actually have a seat. We just want you to stretch your legs out, that's all. Yeah, you're welcome. All right.
fathers of courage and fathers of time. We are daughters of dust and the sons of great visions. We are sisters of mercy and brothers of love. We are lovers of life and the builders of nations. We are seekers of truth and keepers of faith. We are makers of peace and the wisdom of So it turns out three weeks ago, faculty, staff, and students came together specifically to honor excellence in the art and science of teaching and advising effectiveness, and to celebrate the conceptualization and execution of scholarly and creative achievement. It's also a chance to honor the careers of three faculty and staff whose extraordinary contributions over a lifetime in teaching, scholarship, and to the community call for extraordinary recognition, who have earned the high honor of emeritus status as recommended by me and the provost and then bestowed by the college's board of trustees. They are Professor of Physics and Astronomy, Patrick Polly, <laughs> Professor of Chemistry, George Lazinski, <laughs> and Registrar of the College, Mary Borsh Kazai, who's here with us today. Thanks so much to all three. I now call on Richard M. Nemec, Chair of the Board of Trustees, to bring greetings to the graduating seniors on behalf of the trustees and to present the board's statement for authorization for the granting of Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Science degrees at today's exercises. Dick, it's all yours. Thank you, Scott. What a glorious morning. On behalf of Beloit's Board of Trustees, I'm pleased to extend our best wishes and congratulations to all the members of the class of 2022 and to their families and friends. It's my pleasure to inform you that the Board of Trustees has authorized the awarding of appropriate degrees at this year's commencement exercises to all such candidates as have been certified by the registrar and approved by the faculty. In accordance with these actions and on behalf of the Board of Trustees of Beloit College, I now call upon President Scott Bierman to confer these awards pursuant to the legal authority vested in the Board of Trustees under the charter granted by the legislature of the Territory of Wisconsin on February 2, 1846. Okay. okay, Dean Boynton, will you now please present the candidates for degrees? Mr. President, 
I first have the honor to present the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Will these candidates please rise and commence coming forward? A candidate who attains the highest scholastic standing during four years of work at Beloit College is selected to represent the group and to re receive a hood in recognition of this achievement. By action of the appropriate authorities and with the approval of the faculty and board of trustees, the candidates so chosen to represent the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts at this 172nd commencement exercise are Umam Garg. <laughs> Umang is from New Delhi, India, whose degree is awarded summa cum laude. <laughs> Mara Rose Hanley. from Wauwatosa, Wisconsin, whose degree is awarded summa cum laude. Sahil Rizal. From Kathmandu, Nepal, whose degree is awarded summa cum laude. and Hua Nguyen Trung from Ho Chi Minh, Vietnam, whose degree is awarded summa cum laude. In accordance with the recommendation of the provost and the dean of the college on behalf of the faculty and the board of trustees of Beloit College and by the authority vested in me, I confer upon you the degree of Bachelor of Arts. The token of the hood placed upon you confers upon all the candidates whom you represent the degree of Bachelor of Arts together with all the rights and privileges thereunto pertaining. All right, you're ready. Khadija Ali, cum laude. Oh. Okay, let's start again. <laughs> Khadija Ali, cum laude. Cameron James Alonzo, cum laude. Rachel S. Alvarado. Samuel Caesar Ankeny. Sina Apicelli Abel, magna cum laude. Abdul Aziz. <laughs> Kelly Allison Badgley, summa cum laude, Departmental Honors Dance, Departmental Honors Psychology. Cindy Baina, cum laude.
Rahul Hurley Basu. Summa cum laude, Departmental Honors, Environmental Studies, Environmental Communication and Arts. Margaret M. Baugh, summa cum laude, Departmental Honors, Critical Identity Studies, Departmental Honors, History. Deepakshi Bardavaj. Molly J. Bloom, magna cum laude, Departmental Honors, Media Studies. Trevor Atticus Bond, cum laude. Dakota Jade Boer. Connie Beth Bronson, summa cum laude, Departmental Honors Theater Production. Hunter Michael Brown, cum laude. Anna Mary Bunzel. Litsi Paula Carranza Torres, summa cum laude. John Edgar Castro Flores. Isabel Chavez. Cindy Chen, summa cum laude, Departmental Honors, Chinese Language and Culture. Sid Reese Clark. Owen Fergus Claxton. Jasmine Contreras Rodriguez. Erica Maria Corral. Deanna Grace Coro. <laughs> Timothy James Cotter. Summa cum laude, Departmental Honors, Chinese Language and Culture, Departmental Honors, International Relations. Matthew John Crandall. Emma Margaret Davis, summa cum laude, Departmental Honors Creative Writing, Departmental Honors Psychology. Charlene Paulette Davis Alessia. (laughs) 
Liam Lake Day, cum laude. Edith Lynn DeGrinia, magna cum laude. Arlie Skyla, Skyle, Sky Der Flinger, summa cum laude. Duke K. Ding. Anna Caroline Downing, summa cum laude. Jack Bruce Dunbar. Dio John Edwards. Sam Elliot Erickson, cum laude. <laughs> Zoe Colleen Figert Curl. <laughs> Alyssa Francis Flores Torado, <laughs> cum laude. Monica Franklin. Robert John Franklin Jr. Andrew Jeffrey Freetag. Emily Rose Fulcher, <laughs> summa cum laude, Departmental Honors Critical Identity Studies. <laughs> Aniruda Kajula. Dean Nicholas Gatsis. <laughs> Bippen, GC, magna cum laude. Abney R. Good. Regina Nicole Gulstorf, summa cum laude, Departmental Honors, Political Science. Chloe Nicole Hain, magna cum laude. Kelsey Ashton Hames. Sean Clayton Helton. Bryce Stephen Hinthorn.
James Cameron Hicks. Foon Huang, magna cum laude. Aaron Jacob Holtzmuller, magna cum laude, Departmental Honors, Sociology. Madison Alexis Hudson. Nguyen Hun, magna cum laude, Departmental Honors, Environmental Studies, Environmental Justice and Citizenship. Julia Reem Huang, summa cum laude. Jamia J. Irving. <laughs> Ethan Dale Johannesmeyer. Nathaniel Graham Johnson, magna cum laude. Branda Jin Joseph. Y. Kang, summa cum laude. Zhao <laughs> Kong. Okay. Hardika Shahi Kushiap. Rhiannon Ashley King, summa cum laude, Departmental Honors, Creative Writing, Departmental Honors, Psychology. Elizabeth Rose Kelly. Ramsey Alon Closer. Summa cum laude, Departmental Honors Creative Writing. Trevor Nepp, magna cum laude. Grace Carolyn Lafferty. Nathaniel Robert Limke, summa cum laude, Departmental Honors, History. <laughs> Catherine D. Linton, magna cum laude. Stephanie Nicole Lopez, magna cum laude, Departmental Honors, Sociology. Layla R. Mackey.
V. Mai. Summa cum laude. Andrew James Marchese. Kenneth Lee Martin. Chesity McDaniels. Nicholas Cielo McIntyre. Dallas S. McKinney. Laura Elizabeth McLean, magna cum laude. Josefa M. Mir, magna cum laude. Allison Suzanne Morer. Lai Chia Moa. Michaela M. Moyer. Desiree Mukucha. <laughs> Sachi Pankaj Mundara, summa cum laude. Huan Nguyen, summa cum laude. <laughs> Phuc Tizan Nguyen, summa cum laude. Departmental Honors, Education and Youth Studies. Tran Min Quan Nguyen. Brianna Lee Nowak, Magna Cum Laude. Stella. Ivy, Nana Akusake Obing Darko, Cum Laude. Emily Ann O'Brien. Yolanda O. Odafua. <laughs> Payton Elizabeth O'Keefe, summa cum laude. Scott. Raymond Olson. Yeah. 
Rory Mirian Onaten, cum laude. <laughs> Departmental Honors, Music. Delilah Paniagua, cum laude. Yeah! <laughs> Andrew Parnell. Macy Peyton Pedersen, summa cum laude. Andrew Michael Peckney, summa cum laude. <laughs> William Devlin Peterson. <laughs> Niccolo Petricione, <laughs> magna cum laude. Madison Quinn Fort Miller, magna cum laude. Yun Pham, summa cum laude. Philip Polachansky. Trent Charles Porter, magna cum laude. Swarup Podell, summa cum laude. Department of Honors Psychology. <laughs> Catherine Jean Powers, cum laude. <laughs> Laura Carolina Quintero, cum laude. Anthony Nicholas Renzema, magna cum laude, Departmental Honors Media Studies, Departmental Honors Music. Carolina Eva Richens. Leo Rivera. Gisela Sarabia Sandoval, summa cum laude. Alana Eve Shacker, magna cum laude. Joshua Paul Schilling. <laughs> Juliet Maribel Schmidt, Departmental Honors Music. Elsa Maria Schroeder, summa cum laude. <laughs> 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 
Harper Lauren Scott, magna cum laude, Department of Honors Creative Writing. Jane Gwendolyn Josie Sebastian. Torin Joe Seeberger, summa cum laude, Departmental Honors Creative Writing, Departmental Honors Critical Identity Studies. Joshua D. Shapiro. Bhavya Singh. Hope, Denise Smith-Taylor. Grady M. Spencer, magna cum laude. Christopher William St. George, Department of Honors Creative Writing. <laughs> Jamdan Suon, Magna Cum Laude. Caitlin Page Taft. <laughs> Tagashov Sergei Sergeevich, summa cum laude. <laughs> Midori Sidney Tanada. Olivia Ann Taylor, Department of Honors Theater. Mesakurta Tesfai, Summa Cum Laude, Department of Honors Sociology. Sashank Tapa, Summa Cum Laude, Department of Honors Computer Science. Lena Irene Thompson, magna cum laude. Kyle Matthew Thompson Taylor, Departmental Honors, Political Science. Shay Edward Topol, cum laude. Tuan Trun, summa cum laude. <laughs> Haley Tran, summa cum laude, Department of Honors, Media Studies. <laughs> Gotter Tren. Long Huan Chin, Magna Cum Laude. Yeah. 
Christian Omatoni, magna cum laude, Departmental Honors, Computer Science. Michelle Karina Unda. Ethan Barnett Van Meter. Mylan Walters, cum laude. <laughs> Rita Wang. Amy Ward, summa cum laude, Departmental Honors, Environmental Studies, Environmental Justice, and Citizenship. Edward A. Yusuf, magna cum laude. Mr. President, I next have the honor to present the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Science. <clears throat> I may need to repeat that whole sentence. Legally, it may need to be necessary. I next have the honor to present the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Science. A candidate who attains the highest scholastic standing during four years of work at Boyd College is selected to represent the group and to receive a hood in recognition of this achievement by action of the appropriate authorities and with the approval of the faculty and the board of trustees, the candidate so chosen to represent the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Science at this 172nd commencement exercise is Emily Nicole Klinkscales. from Golden Valley, Minnesota, whose degree is awarded summa cum laude. In accordance with the recommendation of the provost and the dean of the college, and on behalf of the faculty and the board of trustees of Bloyd College, and by the authority vested in me, I confer upon you the degree of Bachelor of Science. The token of the hood now placed upon you confers upon all the candidates whom you represent the degree of Bachelor of Science together with all the rights and privileges thereunto pertaining. Back to you. Gabriel Anel Cabrera. Jane Dunham Champagne, cum laude. Ocean Elise Clavet, summa cum laude. Owen E. Cowell, magna cum laude. Leland Coit. Crum, cum laude. Julian Andre Deshan de Givancourt, cum laude, Departmental Honors, Mathematics. McKenna Teresa Downing, magna cum laude.
Tenaj Reed Cater. Una Kelly Go. Summa Cum Laude. Taylor Ann Goodyear, summa cum laude. <laughs> Joseph David Heron DeLong, magna cum laude. Madeline Grace Holisky, magna cum laude. Ian Michael Jacobs, summa cum laude, Departmental Honors Biochemistry. Luke William Kendall, Summa cum laude. <laughs> Drew Todd Landock, cum laude. <laughs> Mong Ye Lee, summa cum laude. Departmental Honors Sociology, Departmental Honors Mathematics. Jonathan Lombardo. Zoe Alana Mackey. Christiana Faith Melton, magna cum laude. <laughs> Naomi Anesh Nilongo. Keelan Davis Norman Klatt, summa cum laude, Departmental Honors, Biochemistry. <laughs> Sophia Rose Nowak, summa cum laude. <laughs> Stephanie Austin, magna cum laude, Departmental Honors, Biochemistry. Dylan J. Pollock, summa cum laude. <laughs> Sonali Sharadara Nanjan Pandarkar, cum, magna cum laude. Maximilian Joseph Podkopal. Yu Jiang Pu, magna cum laude, Departmental Honors, Mathematics. Martina Polito.
Kieran Rodning. Silas Matthew Say, oh, yeah. magna cum laude. Yeah. <laughs> Uzma Syed, magna cum laude. Thank you. Hel uh, Grace Helen Scott, magna cum laude, Departmental Honors Biochemistry. <laughs> Mackenzie Austin Schaubach, cum laude. Stephen Richard Soli, magna cum laude, Departmental Honors Biology. Olaf Stephen Sorensen. Emma Janelle Stoner. Keeler, August Tardif, Magna Cum Laude. <laughs> Poa, Victoria, Cum Laude, Departmental Honors, Biochemistry. Thank you, Dean Boynton. It is no easy task to pronounce everyone's name completely accurately, uh, and your work around this, Eric, is appreciated. Thank you. We did it. You did it. It is my great honor to present to you, my friends, the class of 2022. Congratulations, while we bask in the glory of these degree-adorned graduates, let me introduce to you Deepakshi Bhardwaj, who will offer her own brilliant reflections on her time at Bloy College. While Deepakshi comes up here, I first met Deepakshi in her first year at Beloit when she joined a small number of other students to make chocolate chip cookies with Melody and me at our house. Her qualities as a student and a person were evident right away, and she made some seriously good cookies. She was a rising star for sure. Economics professor Laura Grube agrees. Laura writes, Deepakshi has made Beloit College better for the last four years. Laura says, and this opinion is universally shared on campus. Surely that is true. As one of Beloit's most recent student government 
co-presidents, Tapakshi, who graduates with majors in business economics and international relations, demonstrated insight, poise, empathy, and quick thinking while the college grappled with constantly evolving challenges. From New Delhi, India, she regularly interacted with students, faculty, staff, and trustees from all walks of life and held work positions in the admissions office and the library help desk. She has excelled as both a leader and a collaborator, taking charge and stepping back with equal grace and confidence. Dipakshi developed substantial research and deep connections in political science and the economics departments, presenting two symposium presentations this spring, mere weeks before this day. One, focusing on the statelessness in the UK with international relations professor Beth Dougherty, and the other, analyzing the impacts of climate change on migration with economics professor Zip Fan. But if you really want to see Dipakshi light up, ask her about her favorite Bollywood films. We are grateful for the thoughtful questions, creative solutions, and meaningful relationships that Dipakshi has made at Beloit College. Please join me in welcoming Dipakshi Bardwaj. Good afternoon. Finally, we're here. Four years, three for some, I respect you. When I was thinking about what is it that I want to share with you all as we move on to the next phases of our lives, I fondly remembered this time when I, for the first time in my life, met a Nobel Prize winner. I was stunned. I've never seen someone who, as they say, has conferred the greatest benefit to humankind through their work. As I now recall, I, I felt this deep sense of amazement um, as a fact that I was really having a conversation with someone like that. I was born and brought up in India, and when I decided to travel 12,000 miles to get an education, I had no idea that what this is going to be one of the best experiences of my life so far. James Heckman, was one of the many incredible people that I had met and had a conversation with at Beloit. The reason why I'm talking about this is to emphasize what Beloit is all about. It is not about what, it is about who. There were multiple times when my fellow classmates and I and you all, you, you all can attest to that, we had the opportunity to meet incredible, incredible activists, politicians, policy makers, authors, and scientists, and, and every single time we talked to them, we felt that our voice mattered, our questions mattered, and our presence in this world mattered. Whenever we engaged with someone doing something meaningful and fundamentally unique, we believed that we could do it too. My friends, it is with this belief that I want you all to lead your life going forward. Believe that you have the power to contribute to humankind in a meaningful way. And yes, engaging with these amazing people was incredible. What was even more special about Beloit is that every day we were surrounded by our fellow Beloiters, faculty, staff, and amazing community members who inspired us just as much. I want to thank all the people who made my life more meaningful during my time here. Thank you, Professor Toral, Professor Dougherty, Professor Groob, Professor Fan, Tori, thank you. Matt Laszlo, thank you. And my dearest friends, Olivia and Bavia, thank you. Thank you for laughing with me, for crying with me, Thank you everyone for making this day so, so special. Beloit College does something extremely remarkable. It makes you more you. This small place from what I've witnessed is filled with big, bold, and profound voices. Something that I'm extremely proud of is that every single one of you 
my friends, class of 2022, you're unique and you're simply stellar. What makes this class so special is that it is not afraid to be courageous. Like Tori said, the word of the year, courage, or to speak your mind. Never let this ability fade away. You all make me hopeful and eager for a better future. I'm hopeful for the future because at Beloit, I saw that students belonging to so many different countries, some of them fighting bloody battles, including mine, I'm from India. We've seen some terrible, terrible skirmishes. But we could still sit in the commons, eat the food, which I hope gets better, and have conversations with each other, work on meaningful projects together, and find more reasons to stay together. Here, we are just Beloiters, and we are able to see people for who they really are. It gives me hope that these are the people who are going to go out into this world and live their lives with the same values and same love for their fellow human beings. It is beautiful, it is powerful, and I hope it is pervasive. My parents are here today, all the way from India. <laughs> And although I know that my mom is doing a great job at translating parts of my speech to my dad, there is something I want to tell him in Hindi, which is my mother tongue. Thank you, Papa. Thank you, Ma. Thank you, Harus Cheez Ke Le Jo Aapne Mere Le Ki Hai, and for this day. Jab se I was a little child, aap logo ne mujhe bataya tha ki vidya wo cheez hai jo aap se koi nahi chhin sakta. I'm celebrating that today, and I'm celebrating it with you. Vidya. <laughs> I'm just going to quickly tell you what I told him. <laughs> Vidya is a Sanskrit word which roughly translates to something that is a mix of knowledge, wisdom, and clarity in English language. And an ancient Indian proverb defines Vidya as something that cannot be stolen by thieves, nor taken away by kings, nor fought over by heirs, nor is it heavy on the shoulders to carry. If spent well, it always keeps growing. The wealth of knowledge is the most superior. This was something that my parents ingrained in my mind since I was a child. Friends, as we celebrate our journey forward and we celebrate us earning this quality education, I want us to take a moment to recognize what a privilege it is to even have the opportunity to get an education. What begins now is an even longer journey where we need to stay committed to educating ourselves every single day. Always keep this curiosity and appetite for learning the ideas that are different from your own, alive. Always keep Beloit in you, alive. My dear friends, thank you so much. You all look incredible with your caps and gowns for making the past four years extremely special. Look around you. Look at each other. Congratulate each other. Take in this moment. Smile with pride and be deeply grateful to all those people who've touched your lives along the way, even random strangers, your teachers, your parents, your mentors. Someone may be sitting next to you. Class of 2022, congratulations on graduating college. I look out. So many friends right in front of me right now, whose futures are so bright and whose last four years have made a difference at this college, who have changed this college, changed the people to your left and right, changed the people to your front and back, changed me. Students like Ka Ding, who is about to start 
his graduate degree in environmental management at Duke. Yolanda Adafua, who won the Truesdale Student Leadership Award and will be joining Simmons University in their Joint Public Policy and Gender and Cultural Studies Master's Degree Program. <laughs> Isabel Chavez, who will be planning and executing a spectacular music festival in your area in the not too distant future. Jamia Irving, who will be improving the state of Illinois from her position at Governor Pritzker's office on her pathway to running the state herself. Peyton O'Keefe, who was among other things captain of Beloit swim team, president of Kappa Delta, and is on track to her future as an attorney of law. Maria Ashenbrenner and Gabrielle Watson both earned prestigious Fulbright Award. Steve Sully, who's captain of the men's lacrosse team, leader in the Health and Healing Channel, will be attending Georgetown's Master of Science in Integrative Medicine and Health Sciences prior to going to medical school. Lai Moam, who will be earning her Master's of Science degree in kinesiology and physical education at NIU, and Uzma Syed, who joined us from Afghanistan and has demonstrated as much resilience with as much goodwill and generosity as nearly anyone I have ever known and is soon to be on her way to dental school. Another sentence I never thought I would deliver. I cannot wait to have you perform a root canal on me, Uzma. The list of budding success stories goes on and on and winds throughout the 250 of you. None of this would have happened were it not for the unparalleled procreative powers of your parents and the care and tending of your guardians. The fine quality of their good efforts are in evidence right in front of me. Please join me in thanking your newly minted parents of a Beloit College graduate. But you've also been the beneficiaries of generations of past students, parents, and friends of the college, the resources the college employs to help make this education possible are the direct result of thousands of generous supporters who believe that access to a school like this matters. Without it, without them, there would not be a graduating class of 2022 that looks or feels anything like you, and that would be a crime. Please join me in thanking all the many people who have supported your access to this college so generously. Now, take a look around at the faculty and staff that are here today. If you asked any one of them what it is that keeps them working at Beloit College, they would answer without any hesitation that it is you. Your success is their success. Please join me now in thanking the staff and faculty of Beloit College. What an amazing job you have done over the last four years. Aaron Chapin, the college's first president, said of the early alumni of the college, something that I and future presidents will be able to say about you. Alma mater looks fondly on your faces. Her heart swells with worthy pride as she reviews the lives you have been living since you went out from her charge and she borrows the honors you have won and wears them as jewels for her adornment today. Your presence fills her heart with gladness and her face with smiles. The values of this college are embodied in my friends in front of me, the class of 2022. I invite this class to stand and participate in one more Beloit tradition. The faculty and staff will follow the platform party 
out in the recessional, they will then create one last gauntlet to which you must pass. After that, please join us for lunch right over here behind, uh, in front of Pearson's. Thank you for celebrating this great day with all of us at Beloit College. Safe travels home. Thank uh you. -huh.